welcome back into my kitchen. I am Holly Morrison and we are going to talk about one of my most favorite things. It's something that has had one of the most significant impacts on my health of just about anything. There's not too many things I can compare it to. I would say juicing and veggie shots. We've got a video for that so you have to check out our playlist. But what's in that pot right there is liquid gold. And I'm going to show you how to make the easiest chicken bone broth. Organic, healthy, cost-effective, lovely, delicious. Your family is going to line up and beg for it. So stick around. We're going to jump right on in. here. This actually is where we're going to be pulling off our first batch of bone broth. So where we begin is what you're going to see next. All right, well, we're back in my kitchen. We have not been here in a long time and we are going to make bone broth. This is where we begin. So this is roughly about five pounds of organic chicken drumsticks. Yes, this is Kirkland brand, but I am not a loyalist to one company or the other. If you can get something better quality than organic drumsticks, stick with drumsticks though, or leg quarters, um, get it. Um, this is just what I get. It defrosts wonderfully. I just put it in a basin of um, warm water, not hot water, and give it a little bit till it defrosts. If you want, you can defrost it a different way. This is just how I do it. And then once it's fully defrosted, and that just means it's moving around really easy, then I'm just gonna dump this water out. And then I'm gonna open each one of these. I do the whole batch. I have a six quart Instapot pot that we're gonna be using. Um, I just gave that a good scrub. Um, and we're gonna fill this up with the chicken. So for right now, we're gonna get this baby open. All I do is I do a diagonal cut And it's roughly about anywhere from 16 to 18 to 20 drumsticks. So we're going to work over here now. And I am going to turn the water on. Cool. And we're just going to come over here only. Rachel, we can just get right over here. And we're giving everything a really good rinse. I'm a nurse. I know I've mentioned that before in some of my videos. But when I get done using anything in my kitchen that's touched raw meat, I have a little spray of a solution of Clorox and water, and I will spray the sink down. I'll even spray the colander down and just disinfect it because, yeah, we don't want any cooties. So once these are nice and rinsed, um, we're going to put them in our Instapot. I'm going to rinse my hands here. I'm not using any soap yet, and I'm going to move this out of the way and move my Instapot over. And all I'm going to do is move these in. Now after they're in or before they're in, I'm gonna add something that I call veggie scraps. I learned this about 20 years ago from some cooking chefs that I watched on PBS TV. That tells you I'm dating myself really big time there, right? And I mean, there's no ordered way of where you're putting these in. So just put them all in. A six quart will handle this fine. A four quart could almost handle all of these, but not quite. I'm gonna do a little bit of moving around because I want you to see what I'm gonna do next. And I'm going to give my hands another rinse because I'm not going to touch the chicken anymore. And get a little bit of soap. Careful not to get that in my chicken because nobody wants soapy chicken. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, this is going to get two quarts of clean water poured on top of it in a moment, but not right this second. What I'm going to do right now is that I'm adding my veggie scraps. I keep them bagged separately because there's occasions where I just do one or the other. But these are my standard three. Um, sometimes I'll put bell pepper in there. But these are veggies that I have used and I've kept 
the pieces and they've gotten a good rinse before I put them in. Now these carrots are the bottom of a bag that has been in here for a while, so they're not looking fantastic, but they're fine. They've been in my freezer. And I don't put a ton of carrots in mine just because I feel like they add a sweetness to it that I don't always want. And then sometimes I'll start an onion. And again, these have all had a good rinse before I put them in, and they're just in my freezer waiting for me to make a batch of bone broth. Now this is a big hunk of one. I'll save that for another time because I don't want to overboard the onion flavor, but the peelings are fine. They're going to be very easy to pull back out. You're not going to eat this, but it's going to add wonderful flavor. There we go. And then last, but definitely not least, we eat a lot of celery in our house. So we love the flavor of celery. And then there's a bunch of the green tops that I just trim off. And again, they're kind of icy because I give them a good rinse before they go back in the freezer. And that's it. And these will just sit in the freezer waiting for me to make bone broth. Now I'm going to cover that with some water in just a second. Um, but the other thing I'm going to add in here is a head of garlic. But I'm not going to add that right now. I'm going to add that about an hour and a half to two hours before I'm going to pull this. So I will prep it in just a minute and show you. Well, actually, I probably won't prep it right now, but you'll see me add it in at some point. Um, and that's just to get some garlic paste, which is wonderful. And it's just full of lovely flavors. So two quarts of water about to go on this and some herbs. And we'll take it from there. All right, now we're going to add some spices. So I add pretty much the same thing every time. If I've got fresh rosemary available, I'll add that. So here's our two quarts of water going in. Ours came from a Berkey, yours can come from somewhere else, and that will fill my pot to the maximum fill once I add that two quarts. So if you're doing a smaller batch, you're gonna scale back your water. If you're doing a third of this, then you're gonna do about three cups, four cups of water, somewhere in there. So you'll have to just kind of proportion it for whatever um, you're cooking it with. So I put parsley in because it just adds good nutrition. It doesn't, I don't think it adds a ton of flavor, but it's a great source of potassium. So then we're gonna add thyme. And I add a good teaspoon and a half. Lots of nutrition and tons of flavor. And I buy these in bulk and organic, and then I just put them in jars. This is actually an old Parmesan cheese container from some Parmesan from Whole Foods that I save because it makes it nice when you just wanna dip a spoon in and get a half a teaspoon or something but I honestly just eyeball just about everything. Okay, this is coarse rosemary. I'm gonna crush this up a little bit in a mortar and pestle in just a moment, so I'm gonna put the lid back on that for now. And then some peppercorns. These are just organic peppercorns. I do not crush this because I want them to come back out. And I put about 10 in. And then they'll just easily come right back out. And then, last but not least, let me get my mortar and pestle out. And we're just gonna crush and you can crush your pepper too, but I would not crush your pepper with this because it settles to the bottom. And we're just going to put a little bit of rosemary in about, about a half a teaspoon at the most. It's pretty strong, fragrant, floral, really lovely. Now, I'm gonna let Rachel come right on top so she can see how this works. This is a handy little guy. And I don't want it in a powder. I just wanna crush it. These are whole rosemary. And the reason I wanna crush it, it just releases some of the oil. So I'm just gonna dump that in. All right, so we're gonna get our garlic that I was telling you about. It only needs to be in this pot for about two hours. You can do it the first two hours or the last two hours. I'm gonna do it the first two hours. And what I do is I cut it in half right here. And then I just lay it right in the pot the way it is in a little corner so it'll be easy to get out. And that's gonna make some amazing garlic paste. Now I know I just added some rosemary. We have some rosemary that's popping up. I'm gonna throw that in too because fresh is not as intense as the dry, but that's just beautiful, isn't it? You don't have to chop it because it's gonna come right back out. I'm gonna lay that in. All right, so this is an accessory that you can buy. It's a crock pot lid. Um, and it goes to your Instapot, and you would just order it based on whatever size you get. This, I have a six and a half quart Instapot. So this is going right over here. And I put the lid on, 
and it now acts like a crock pot. So I'm gonna get Rachel to follow me down here. Now, if I'm in a hurry, I'll put it on saute for about 15 minutes, which will just get it to the simmer. And I will turn that down to 15 minutes. And once it comes to a simmer in 15 minutes, it doesn't take longer than that. Then I'm gonna hit cancel and I'm gonna come back here and hit slow cook. Now, if I do the 15 minutes, I'll trim this up a little bit. So I'm gonna cook this for about four and a half hours. But if I do the saute setting to get it to the simmer quickly, and when you're putting frozen vegetables in, it may take a bit to do that. And then in about four hours, I'm gonna come over here with a fork and I'm gonna check it to see if it's fork tender. If it's fork tender, your first batch of bone broth is ready. All right, so we're gonna make some veggie scraps. So again, I make veggie scraps a lot on juicing day and we juice carrots and celery a lot. So I will make mega bags on those days. But the rest of the time, all I'm gonna do is just open up some celery that I've bought. getting a good wash you know and really there's no dirt really on them but we're just giving them a good wash in case there's something on it and I know that looks kind of ugly but there's no dirt and if you want to trim that off you totally can and then this is going to go into my Ziploc bag and I reuse my bags so once my bag is empty I keep the bags in the freezer and just keep refilling them. And I mean, eventually they wear out. The ones with the little sliders are kind of nice, but I don't buy those a lot because they're kind of expensive. So when they're on sale, I think it's glad. And then I just take all the air out, close it up, take all the air out because you don't want freezer burn. And mine don't get freezer burn because we, we use these a lot. I mean, I'm, I make two batches of bone broth a week, um, but we have very happy joints. I'm just getting all that air out. And if you want to label like the date on them, that's not a bad idea. But if you're turning it over pretty good and just have a way of rotating it, and I kind of try to make it flat so it'll just not take a ton of space. And that's, that's a perfect amount for one batch of bone broth. So that can just go right in your freezer and it's waiting on you. All right, so our garlic has been in for a couple of hours, maybe just a little bit more. Oh, if you could just smell that right now. Delish. All right, so we're going to go right on in here, and there is our garlic head. It wasn't fully submerged the whole time, so sometimes it depends upon your garlic. Sometimes, I'm trying to leave those herbs in there. Sometimes that means it will not turn into paste really well, and you might have to just put it back in for another 30 minutes or 45 minutes. So let me put my lid back on over here, and we're just gonna let that go. That's got another couple more hours. So we're gonna get our garlic paste out of the garlic head. So we're gonna lay it here. And you can wait till it cools, but it's probably better to go in and get started right now. Because if it does need to go back in for a little bit, and I mean, that's just how cooking is, you know? All right, so this is all I do. You don't want any of the garlic peeling. You're just going to push it down, and there's the garlic paste. It's coming right out. So anyway, just smashing that in, just so you can see how soft that is. And if it does not, if it's not that soft, like just try to get one out and smash it. And if it's not soft, just put it right back in. Okay, so I am finishing off our garlic paste. So I've got both heads of garlic in here and I'm going to put a couple of inches of salt. This is just a good quality salt. You can use whatever kind you're used to using. And then a couple of tablespoons of a good oil. This is avocado oil. 
let's see, I'm trying not to chug the whole thing in there. It's about three-fourths empty. And there's one tablespoon and the other. If I pour it all the way, the whole thing is going to come out. I don't want to do that because <laughs> we don't need that. So that's all you're going to do. You're just going to cover it with the oil, and then that oil is going to be infused with all that garlic goodness. Now, this garlic at this point is actually kind of sweet. So you could make it, put, a, put it in a salad dressing. You could add that whole thing to your blender and make a vinaigrette with it, like a garlic vinaigrette, a roasted garlic vinaigrette. Um, the sky's the limit. There's so many places you could pop that in and it's adding nutrition and delicious. All right, so the way I make bone broth, it was kind of an epiphany kind of moment. Um, and I'll talk to you along the way as to why you want to drink bone broth. If you're on my video right now, you probably already know there is some great health benefits to drinking bone broth. One of the greatest is I can walk. I was at a rec 20 years ago and I had two years of rehab, walked with a cane for two years. And until I got the revelation about collagen and all the benefits of bone broth, I continued to struggle with deep pain, arthritis, unable to do hardly anything. And honestly, the revelation came from the Lord. Like, He leads me. He guides me. I pray. I cry out. And He gives me answers. So, this discovery was kind of strange. It was, and I'm going to kind of work as I'm talking. But this discovery, so this batch right here is your first batch. It's coming off. Let me get all those drippies in there. I'll see if I can talk while I'm doing this at the same time, because it takes a little bit of time to get this going. Okay, so you saw what I did at the sink, got everything set up, um, and then you also saw where I pulled off my garlic head and turned that into garlic paste. So now we're pulling off our first half gallon of bone broth. And what we're going to do is we're going to pour it off into our stainless steel colander and stainless steel bowl. Um, and we're pulling it off to, I typically either make this into a meal or sipping broth. So we're pulling this off. I'm not gonna tell many stories right now, but I want you to kind of see all the love. There it is, isn't that beautiful? And there's all our veggie scraps. They're all cooked down. They're all gonna be disposed of. So I'm pouring this in carefully, look out. It could be in the splash zone. You don't do this twice. Why don't you set it up? All right, now this is kinda of most of the liquid is off, so I'm actually going to, and this is a wooden countertop, but I'm going to still put it on this just to kind of keep it from wilting my countertop. So this right here, underneath, and we've pulled a lot of the herbs, the peppercorns have all come out, and I'm just going to tap that in there. So this is the gold right here. This is what we're cooking to produce right there. I'm going to let Rachel do a close-up on that for me. And I'm going to put some in a bowl so that we can see how it gelatin, gelatinizes, gelatinizes. Yeah, that's kind of one of those words that we could have several people have a different opinion on how that one goes. So, Rachel, would you go get me a colander? I mean, not a colander, but a ladle. And we're going to pour some of that off in here. And then I'm going to put this in the refrigerator and just let it gel. Um, so you can see before the video is all over. Thank you, sweetie. That was one thing I forgot to get out. And I'm sure as we get a close up of that. Thank you, Rachel. I mean, that is just sipping broth right there. Happy, happy. Delish, unbelievable. And all of the herbs have been pulled out when I pulled it through the colander. Okay. All right, so we're gonna put that aside, let it cool, and then I'm gonna pop that in the fridge. So we poured off the broth. I took a little bit off to let it cool, and then I'm going to put that in the fridge so at the end you can see our lovely gelatinous broth. So what we have left in here are the veggie scraps and the chicken. And the veggie scraps, uh-oh, we have a piece of garlic that didn't come out the first time around. Yum! That's going to be delicious. There we go. Let's see if we can get a close-up on that, Rach. <laughs> so we just, I just smashed that. That's actually more tender. That's a little more cooked than you want your garlic, but it's gonna taste fine. Um, you, garlic is one of those things you don't wanna overcook. All right, so we're going to just pull the chicken out, and we're gonna lay it on this plate to allow it to cool. Because we're gonna debone it, and then we're gonna set up our second batch of bone broth. 
Okay, so I know I was talking to you about why you want to drink bone broth. And a lot of people ask how much you should drink. Um, I say drink as much as you can. Like a lot of people want to know how long you can keep it in the fridge, stuff like that. I'm one of those people, I'm like, your body needs more than you can imagine. Most people are collagen deficient, like severely. If you have brittle nails, if your hair will never grow, if your hair is brittle and breaks off easily, you are collagen deficient. If you have arthritis, you're collagen deficient. So there's a lot of places out there that can tell you all about whether you need collagen, whether you need bone broth. And collagen and bone broth, they use them interchangeably. Bone broth that's made properly and that's cooked properly is slap full of collagen. But not all collagen is created equal. You want it to be gelatinous, you want it to be delicious, because if it's not delicious, you're not going to eat it. That's, that's just the bottom line of my family. My family's pretty picky. All right, so we're getting the rest of this chicken out. And the reason I'm getting it out like this is because I'm gonna debone this. We're gonna actually use this chicken tonight for pulled chicken. And I've actually, Rachel, the crab that. I didn't bring it close enough. This is, this is a future video, but this is um, a honey fermented homemade barbecue sauce. So it's honey fermented garlic homemade barbecue sauce. So the sweetness in the barbecue sauce comes from the fermented honey and garlic together. Delicious content for a future video. So hang in there. So that's what we're going to be putting with our chicken tonight. So the rest of this is all coming off, but we want the bones to cook them again. So ours is going to be like a pulled chicken. And we're probably going to fast forward through some of this because, you know, it's going to take a while to get all that deboned. I'm pretty fast, but you can't go really fast when it's hot. So that's the main thing is you want this baby as cool as you can get it before you jump in. So I'm pulling off. There's a few pieces of chicken that have fallen to the bottom. So grab those two. There's your beautiful rosemary. And now all these veggie scraps can now go in your compost bin. They can go in the trash. I have chickens um, and a dog, except for the onions. You don't give onion peels to a dog, but you can give your carrot scraps and all these other veggies, your animals are gonna tear it up. Okay, one of the things that I mentioned is that if you're not sure if your chicken is done, you can go to your crock pot. Mine's an Instapot crock pot, and I will give you a few tips about that too. A lot of people use crock pots. I switched over to just an Instapot about two and a half years ago, and the broth has changed. It's beautiful. Crock pots, a lot of their liners have some mysterious ingredients. You can read up on that too, and I probably will put a link or two below. But Instapots are stainless steel. They're wonderful. So this is how you know that your chicken is ready. It's fork tender. So Rachel, if you'll get a close up on that just so they can see. So, and it's tender, like it's right about four to four and a half hours. So if your drumsticks are just a little bit smaller, then you wanna hit the four, four hour mark. Um, and if you go longer, then your chicken is going to be dry as a bone. Right now, this is perfect chicken because, you know, you, you're using chicken. So you wanna have your chicken wonderful so you can use that. Okay, so now what we're going to do, I'm gonna move our chicken out of the way. It's probably gonna take about 30 minutes for that to cool off. And I'm gonna get our broth right here. And we're just going to very carefully pour this in our half gallon of mason jar. And we're gonna let it cool. Now it's gonna be a little bit less than a half gallon because I poured off about a cup. So here we go. It's so nice and golden. Now there's a little bit of herbs at the bottom and I only put two quarts in. So whatever we've got surplus is gonna be a little bit of fat and you'll see there's like a little bit of what I call sludge in the bottom if you wanna do a close up of that, Rachel. It's not bad, but this is what our dog gets and she is so thankful. She also gets the fat. So a lot of people are like, what do you do with the fat? Some cultures eat it. I don't have a problem with it. If I'm making a pot of soup, I don't even worry about taking the fat out. Um, but you can skip the fat off once you cool this down. So this is just gonna go in my fridge, but it's gonna sit on the counter a little bit longer to cool off. So this is the gold. This is what you're trying to get. Okay, so we're jumping back in. Um, I've kind of sorted through a few things. This is what's left of the veggie scraps. The garlic would be fine for your dog. Again, not the onions. Um, and then this is what I call the sludge. 
or the bottom of it, and it's just herbs and just miscellaneous. It's nothing bad, you could drink it. I don't find it as appealing. So this will be set aside and cooled for our Great Pyrenees, and she loves me when I give her this, so. And also, when we're completely done with um, deboning the chicken, I'll give her the cartilage and all of that stuff. So now we're gonna jump right in. So what we're doing now is that we are harvesting our chicken. So let me do it this way. So I've got a few tricks of how I do this. There is a way to do this super fast, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that for you really quick. Just so you can see, it can be done. It looks like a lot of work. So I just line my chicken up. Can you get this pretty close, Rachel? Okay, Rachel's my daughter, she's awesome. So we're just pushing it down. And what you're gonna put in your pot for your second batch of bone broth, now this is gonna be true blue bone broth. The first round was chicken and bone broth. So this is gonna have less flavor. So I pushed it down just to make it easy. All the skin's going in, the cartilage is going in. And as you can see, the skin has a lot of the herbs from the first round, so that's going in. And then you've got your pulled chicken. So that's gonna go right here to the side. And I guess if I were smart, I'd have gotten a bowl out, but I've already dirtied enough dishes. Okay, so here's our chicken. The cartilage is going in, the skin is going in. Whoop, that is a piece of chicken. Let me put that over there. <laughs> it's fun talking and cooking at the same time. Even though I've been doing that for years and I've been teaching people how to do things for their body for years, it still gets a little tricky once in a while. Okay, so that's all good. There goes your bone, skin, cartilage, bone, and we're doing it. So we're just gonna keep on going until we get done. I might get Rachel to record what I'm doing and just go really fast. So I've never had anybody record me doing that. That was kind of fun. So look at that mountain of chicken. That's a blank slate. Tonight it's gonna to be pulled chicken with homemade barbecue sauce, and that's gonna go on some healthy buns. That's gonna be delicious. Okay, so that's supper. Everybody's waiting for us to get done with this video so they can eat, so <laughs> let's jump in and get finished. So this, I'm gonna let Rachel use her other phone and get a close up of this. But this is the goal that's going to make you another batch of bone broth. Now I've got some tips and tricks for this one, okay? So this one does not have flavor like this one. Can you see that over there? So this one is so full of flavor, people are gonna run you down for this. All you need to add to this is a pinch of salt, a little bit of peppers, some chopped chives from the front garden bed, and it's happy, happy, ready to eat. They're gonna devour it. Okay, but this one is gonna need a little more love because it is true blue bone broth. The nutrition in here a number one, just as much nutrition as in this one, but Flavor Town did not show up here. So we're gonna do a little bit of tricks. Now, one of my best tricks, I don't have extra chicken to show you. Throw a couple of drumsticks or a leg quarter in here. The flavor from that, you're gonna sacrifice it. You don't really have to sacrifice it. And in about four hours, just take your tongs and go in. I don't have tongs, nope, they're over over in the sink. Take your tongs in and fish it out, debone it, and throw those bones and skin and cartilage all back in, but that's gonna add that lovely chicken flavor that we have with our first batch. So, if that's not an issue for you, don't worry about that. But if flavor matters, pop that in, you will do wonders. So when you're packing up your chicken and putting it in the freezer, just buy a pack of organic leg quarters and just section them off and put one in a Ziploc bag or wrap it up in plastic wrap and it's there just for you to add to your second batch. So second batch is bones, skin, and cartilage. They've already given up a lot of love to make this. So we need some love here. So we're gonna add some love. We're gonna add some fresh veggie scraps. Now remember we chopped those up earlier because so I wanted to show you how to make them. They are all going in. So I'm gonna let Rachel just kind of Get the view of us just dumping them in. So that's onions, carrots, celery, scraps. Already washed, ready to go. They were sitting in the freezer waiting on us. Now we're gonna also add some fresh rosemary from the garden because we found another one that was going rocking and rolling. So we're throwing those in. Now this right here, and this is cooled down, is another head of garlic. So we're gonna cut that in half carefully because it's not a big one. So I'm gonna hold it real carefully. <laughs> All 
All right, and that's going to go in, and it might fall apart. It's okay. It's going to add all of its flavor, but you want to put it where you can get it back out. So I'm going to put it over here to the side, and you'll just get your tongs and fish it out. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're adding herbs. Let me go ahead and add our water. Okay, another tip. You want to see gelatin when you're making bone broth. So it is very important how much water you put to how much chicken. Okay, so this is just bones, cartilage, and skin that's already given up its first round. So I do not do the full half gallon, two quarts, for this round. I do a quart and a half. So there's one quart and a half, or two cups. So a total of six cups are going in here. This one, we got eight cups. This one, we're gonna get six, and that's okay. But you want it to be gelatinous, because that's your, that's your like, yay, I'm putting something great in my body, and my body is so happy. So I personally need that reinforcement to know that I nailed it. So that's all in. Now we're gonna add our herbs. And I don't measure, about a teaspoon. Parsley, we already talked about all the goodness from that. About 10 peppercorns. That is way more than 10. Add those in. And some thyme. And of course, we've already got our veggie scraps in. About a teaspoon. And there it goes. And now we are set up. Can you just imagine all the good love we're getting out of this? I mean, like, we are going to get almost a full gallon of bone broth out of $10 worth of organic chicken. And I think that is it, but I still want to tell you a little bit about, we're going to put the lid on. This is going to go on, oh, there is something different about this round. This round is going to go for 20 hours, or 24. I think mine, I'm not sure if this, yeah, try to think. This is actually, all right, let me show you what we're doing here. I feel like I'm switching gears. Okay, so let's switch over here. We're doing slow cook. Hold on, it's plugged in. Yep, it's plugged in. So hit cancel, hit slow cook. Okay, now we're gonna put this baby, and I go backwards, yep, 24 hours. I had one for a very long time. I gave it away to a friend when I upgraded to this. Um, and this one does 24, isn't that funny? I forgot that. So 24 hours, you know, set it, forget it. Okay, so I do have another video that talks about collagen loading. Collagen loading is where one person would pretty much consume this in about four days. All yourself. You're not going to share it with anybody. You just get that bone broth in. It's going to heal your gut. It's going to heal a lot of things and you don't even realize what it is. Arthritis, um, joint pain, gut problems, nails that are brittle. It's like when you start putting this in your body, it's just going to go and do its job. It's going to just heal your body. So when this is done, we're gonna show you the show you the broth. It's gonna be different. It's not gonna be as gold as this. It's gonna be lighter. Um, there's lots of ways to use that up, and I'll tell you some of those along the way. So we're gonna let this cook. We'll come back tomorrow, and we're gonna pull it off. I'll probably be wearing something else because I'm just gonna pull it off tomorrow evening. But yeah, there we go. That's it. So as promised, when my crock pot had about four hours left, I'm going to add a couple of drumsticks. So that's what we're gonna do right now. All right, well, I've got the lid off. Um, this is our second batch of bone broth. This is the one with just bones. And as I was telling you, it's not as flavorful as your first batch. So your first batch is just chickeny and lovely. This batch is totally great to mix with the first batch and then you have a completely flavorful broth. And I did not mention this before now. I do not put vinegar in my bone broth at any stage. I used to in the early days. Uh, mainly because they're saying it's pulling out more minerals or pulling out more collagen, but it makes the broth taste different. Um, so I find that I'm getting enough because <laughs> I want our broth to taste good. So that's the most important thing to me. So as you can see, everything, and there's a little bit of the chicken that kind of went back in. That totally doesn't hurt. Now, this is going to be a different color broth, as I had said. The other one's going to be more golden. This one's going to be a bit darker just because it cooked longer. So over here are the promised two drumsticks to add flavor. So for the last four hours, you can either do it the first four or the last four. I recommend you do it where you can keep up with it because um, if you don't, and then I would... I recommend putting them all the way under because you want all that good flavor from that chicken and that fresh skin. That's where all the flavor comes from. 
to get all the way down into your broth. So just cover that really well, make sure it's fully submerged. And now that's gonna go for another four hours. And then when you pull your broth, it's gonna taste great. Um, and you're gonna have a little bit more chicken that you can pull and you can make somebody a sandwich or whatever you wish. Well, welcome back into my kitchen for the finale. We're gonna pull off, with the Lord's help, our last batch. I do this all the time. But when you do it with a camera and try to get things lined up and whatever, it's a little tricky sometimes. Okay, so we are pulling this off. Oh, the smells in my kitchen are amazing. Let's get that out of the way. Got my handy dandy. These are great. They came with my kit that came with my lid. So I can't do affiliate links yet with my new channel. For some reason, I'm not a big enough channel for that. So once we get to where we have a big enough channel, the way you can help is please hit subscribe. Okay, now, I have a wooden counter, so I can put this down. Um, I love these counters. They're wonderful. Jeff Davis, godly man, loves the Lord, master craftsman, built this out of countertops that used to be in my restaurant back in Georgia. Yes, that was a very kind soul that he took those and resurfaced them and made them just, you know, nostalgia. Okay, so here we go. So this is just stainless steel bowl, stainless steel colander, stainless steel mesh. And that's what you want to do on your second batch. You don't need to do that on your first one, but your second batch you definitely do just because it's been cooking a lot longer. Now remember, we put less water in this batch and that's why you got to see the gelatin. Okay, so I'm pouring it in. Smells amazing. All right, I'm gonna angle it a little bit easier for me. Get it all in. And then I'm actually gonna give you for those who made it all the way to the end, I'm gonna give you some helpful tips on how to drink your second batch. Okay, so these are just some flavor suggestions here. These are all just fresh out of my garden. Aren't they pretty? So that's just some flat leaf parsley, some um, fresh rosemary, and some fresh thyme. Pretty pretty, isn't it? All right, so those are just some tips on how to make your second batch into a sipping broth. Now you can do this for your first batch, but your first batch, honestly, all by itself. Oh, don't forget garlic. This is organic. It still has the root um, in it, and that's how you can tell that it's been grown properly. Um, and I'll show you how to crush that and microplane it. So anyway, back to what I was saying. This lovely broth, I know, isn't it beautiful, um, is not... 100% as flavorful as the first, but it's, right now it's delicious. So, I mean, you could just add a pinch of really good salt and you're really, really there. But I want to show you some lovely combinations that you could do. So, I'm going to ladle up a bowl and it's really beautiful. And I would love it if we could do a close up on this right here. I may try and do that by myself. We'll see. Um, and then we'll edit out that little, um, I'll try. <laughs> So anyway, I just wanted to go in and get this pulled. Rachel's not here. She is at her aunt and uncle's with Mary and they're having a lovely time. All right, so that's a nice full bowl. So that would be like a meal right here, seriously. Okay, so we're gonna move this out of the way and we're gonna do some tinkering. So let me get my cutting board in front of us. Okay, so you can add just a splash of some lemon juice Amazing. So let's start with the essentials, what you should add in every cup of sipping broth to make it taste good. Honestly, do what you enjoy. Okay, so what makes it more bioavailable is some grass-fed butter. This is from Costco. They just started carrying their own. They are still carrying the Kerrygold, but this is significantly cheaper. Um, for the exact same volume, it's almost $3 cheaper. So for me, I'm going with less, less expensive. It's still New Zealand, good butter. Okay, so I'm gonna put a pat of butter. Now it's kind of long, so it looks like a ton more, but it's really not. It's just a nice little pat of butter in there. That's, again, it's making it more bioavailable um, and it's just more of a complete meal. All right, and then a pinch of salt. Put that in front of us. And a little pinch of pepper. If you love pepper, do a lot more. All right, and then I'm gonna put some lemon zest in there because lemon zest, this is an organic lemon, it's already been washed, and this is just a fine microplane. Oh my gosh, 
I've already sh struck it twice and the smells in here are amazing. You put these two together, delish. Now, you don't have to do all of this. You could just do some of this or you could do all of it. Now, I'm not gonna do the whole lemon because that would be a little overpowered. That's about a third of the lemon. Now, I won't waste that zest, so I will finish doing it. And then you can put a squeeze of lemon in there. Let's move that a little bit out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. We're gonna save that marker plane here because we're gonna do a little bit of garlic. Okay, so we're just putting about a half a teaspoon. Seriously, you could stop right there and it's over the top delish. All right, now we're gonna put some fresh herbs in. Now you can put what you enjoy. I enjoy all of these. I personally do not find that flat leaf parsley or any parsley adds a ton of flavor. It's very earthy and to me that's very inviting. So I enjoy that. Now you can take all these herbs and put them into a mortar and pestle with a little pinch of salt. And I've already put some salt in here, so I probably won't do that. Um, and then, and you can do them dry or you can do them fresh and it works, trust me. We're not gonna do it this time. I'm gonna show you how to crush your garlic in there, but I'm also gonna microplane it. So just a little pitch of rosemary and then the thyme. And this is a cut more too, but I really like it. I wanna stay pretty. Um, I just rake my fingernails off of it and you really almost don't even need to cut this. You can just sprinkle this right in there. And the stems are so tender. It can get woody. And if you dried it, it would definitely be woody. But yeah, just rake them right in. Beautiful. And then these we're just gonna roll up. And I just wad them up and just chop it up. And then that, now you could do green onions. I do green onions in our bone broth all the time. But I'm trying to do something that's a little bit more unusual, things you wouldn't think about. But you're adding tons of minerals and goodness when you add things from your garden. And these all just came from my garden. So I'm gonna add all of those in. Yum, goodness flavor, and then some garlic. Let me move this out of the way, because garlic can be a little intense. When you're trying to crack that baby open, I just push on it and roll it a little bit, and then you can pull off one head. And I'm not gonna do a full one. Now, not everybody likes garlic raw. I do. Um, if you need it to cook, then you might wanna put it in as soon as you ladle that up because even that broth being that hot is gonna cook it. So I'm gonna peel this baby down. You can crush it to make it easier to peel, but then it's not easy to do in a microplane, with a microplane. Okay, so I always do the end that's not the woody part, which is kinda of like the pointy end. So you can hold the, the end that you're not gonna necessarily use anyway because it's a little woody. I'm only gonna do about a half. So as you can see, it's all there. And I'm just gonna tap it in the bowl. Hopefully we didn't do any over there. Yay, we did a good aim. The smells in this kitchen are off the top. I'm definitely gonna get a close up of this with it all in there, it just looks lovely. I feel like I put pepper in, but I'm gonna put another pinch in because I adore pepper. Okay, now I did wanna show you how to crush garlic with a mortar and pestle. So now at this point, it's fine if you whack it really hard and crush it to get the skin off. Of course, it's not going to cooperate. This is a little bit of a drier head, and that's just the nature of the game. Oh, run away. Scoot on back over here. Let's make a pile here so we don't have a big mess. All right, and I'm just going to bang it. You can do that with a knife if you want. Um, I don't. Okay, now I'm not going to put this one in here because I am going to put some salt in it. The salt's going to help it grind. And you could cut it up a little smaller. We're just popping it in. Pinch of salt on top. And then I'm just gonna bang it a little bit and then just swirl it around. It's seriously easy. Like there's not much to it at all. And it, garlic is one of those things that when you crush it, you cut it, you smash it, that's when it is deeply good for you. And it's always good for you. So there it is. It doesn't look like much of anything. What you can do is just put a little bit of your broth in there and swirl it around and dump it in your bowl or in your mug. Now I do have a mug out only to show you that this could be just a sipping broth, just to eat like as a snack. But it totally can be a meal. And if you added some other items into it, which you don't really need to. Okay, I'm gonna move this over. We're not gonna use that in this because I've already got garlic in here. But I definitely need to take a sip of it, just so you can see how delicious it is. Over the top. 
Yeah. Well, there is a million ways you can use that bone broth. I highly recommend that you consume it. You sip it, you work it into your recipes, you use it as sipping broth. If you want to know how to store it, it stores five days in the fridge. Oh, let me finish that thought and then I'll tell you one more thing that I did not do for the beginning. I wanted to tell you that in the very beginning. Okay, hold that thought. <laughs> so five days in the fridge, indefinitely in the freezer. Um, and if you have a fat seal on it, I've heard people say it lasts even longer than five days. So that would be your first batch. This bath is, batch is not going to have any fat in it at all because it is the second batch. And you could just look at that and see there's no lingering fat beads on there at all because that all came out with the first batch. So anyway, drink it, enjoy it, work it into your recipes, give it to your children, teach them to enjoy it. I mean, the only way you get to where you're familiar with something is you get exposed to it pretty regular. So put your Instapot on and crank it up and get some bone broth into your family and into your body and heal because your body wants this. It is craving collagen. It is craving the nutrients that are in here. Okay, now there is some promised things that I wanted to make sure I hit. Um, when I first started making bone broth, I mean like on purpose making bone broth, not just chicken broth because I boiled a chicken kind of thing, but where I intentionally started making bone broth almost 10 years ago, I was taught to put an acid in your pot and with your bones and let it sit for a couple of hours um, with your water and it would help leach out minerals. Now granted, it may very well do that, but that acid, which I often use apple cider vinegar, sometimes I would use lemon juice, what happens though is that it does something to the flavor. And this is already a second batch of bone broth and it's not as flavorful as your first. So if you're adding vinegar, now lemon I think honestly is okay. I think it's tasty. Um, so I would highly recommend you could totally do that very same thing. Add a tablespoon or two to your bones and your liquid and all your goodies and before you turn it on and let it sit, I don't know. There's lots of opinions of whether it works. I've read analysis where it doesn't change it one way or the other by hardly anything. My goal is to get it in the bodies of my children, my husband, myself. So because of that, it's been at least two years that I have no longer added that. We are all still getting all the benefits. We're still enjoying it. We're enjoying it a lot more. So our second batch, I don't have to hide it. I don't have to go, oh, it does taste a little vinegary. They're all like lined up, ready to go. So. I'm about to drink some of this and finish it off. If I think of anything else I might have forgotten, we'll probably tag it on at the end or we'll write it in the comments below. There is a simple, simple thing, but I've been doing it for 10 years. So there's just lots of little trips and ticks, tick, trips <laughs> and tips <laughs> that I love to share with people. But whatever you do, get going making it. Now, one other thing I did not mention, oh, this is in low, let me turn it off is that um, there's people that have asked me, can you do this without the crock pot lid in your Instapot? You totally can. You put it on the vent setting. I find that it is actually, it makes your broth a little bit less gelatinous. And gelatin is what we're after. The collagen being intact is what we're after. Low and slow is how you make proper bone broth that heals. So I'm after all the healing benefits. I love that it tastes good, but I want it to be healing to my body. So I added that, it's very inexpensive. Um, and I, I don't know, again, like I have to work on the links thing. Our channel's really young. Um, it's only almost a year old, actually this month, a few weeks shy of this month. So please share our videos, get the word out about Midwest Mandarins, and please let people know that they can come here and be a part of my journey of healing. I have not arrived. I am on my way, but I am vibrant for somebody who's almost 55. Um, my mom and my sister, sister that's older than me, you know, they're struggling with a lot of health issues. Um, my mom passed away actually seven years ago, but she had tons of health issues from the time she hit menopause really early. Um, our whole family line has lots of female issues and lots of, um, you know, orthopedic issues like arthritis and stuff like that. I am not battling those things. I, I am battling some stuff, but I, I am healthier than anybody in my family line that I know of. At my age um, so this is one of the keys so I highly highly recommend you get what it um, and also I know somebody's gonna put it in the comments so I'm gonna go ahead and hit it um, can you make bone broth in a crock pot I made bone broth in a crock pot for eight years 
I didn't start doing it with an Instapot. Now I've had an Instapot for 10 years, but it never, you know, they didn't have that extra lid feature. I tried to do it with the vent setting where I had read about it and I didn't find success. So I'm going for the healthiest broth. So if you can get your crock pot lid purchased for your Instapot, they're just designed for whatever quart capacity you're doing. Mine's a six quart, so mine's a six quart lid. Um, and they do make an Instapot, I think up to eight quarts. Um, Anyway, you get the lid that you need, and this is better than a crock pot, in my opinion. The broth is clear, the broth tastes different. Um, I gave my crock pot away. It was one of those that was had no um, lead in it, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't panic. <laughs> but there's, you know, there's just practices that people do when they're making things, and they do things cheaper. And so mine was one that they said it. It wasn't on the package, but I emailed them because I was searching when I got that crock pot. So that crock pot was still going. It's a wonderful crock pot, I loved it. But I did give it away because I didn't need to keep something I wasn't using. So I gave it away to a friend who loves to make bone broth. But I highly recommend making all of your bone broth in your Instapot using a crock pot lid on the crock pot setting. So I think that's it. If I can think of anything else I forgot, I'll write it in the comments below. But thanks for dropping in. Thanks for hanging out with me in my kitchen. I know this is gonna probably end up being a pretty long video, but I have had a lot of years making this lovely broth and I just wanted to pass on to you all the goodness. God bless you. Thank you for dropping in. Michelle could be here for this part. This is pulled chicken with some clean ghee. It's getting kind of blackened on the bottom. Uh-oh. A piece of this little, whoops. Okay. And then I've got something called everything seasoning that I made up a recipe for. I'm sprinkling that in, but that's onion powder, garlic powder. I'm doing about a teaspoon worth. That's just going right on top. And as soon as that gets blackened on the bottom, then I'm just gonna put my homemade barbecue sauce on and then we've got all of our healthy bread. We're gonna spoon it up, put it with the salad and chow down. Slow-mo. <laughs> Mary, you ready to get your bite? This will just be stuff at the end. Whoop, chicken's falling out. Rachel's got to put more sauce on. That is barbecue sauce. We just put it back in. The surplus goes back in the bottle. Boop. Yeah, worth the trouble, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. The end. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 Midwest Meanderings pulled barbecue chicken. Well, we make bone broth at the same time. Yeah. So, how's the sandwich? I'll let you know. I'm almost done. <laughs> Mmm. Delish.